OBS Masterclass. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know in OBS Studio to get you from zero all the way up to actually being able to stream. So by the end of this tutorial, you're gonna be streaming like a pro. Let's get into OBS Studio. All right, so jumping in from a new fresh install in OBS, we're gonna have to go over to the settings. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on file, go to settings. We're gonna optimize our stream first. So you have your language, uh, theme, uh, your choice, which you want to use. If you want a confirmation, when you press the uh, start streaming button, uh, you can enable this. Same thing for stopping the stream as well. If you want it, personal preference for all this stuff. I'm going to enable the replay buffer. I use the replay buffer a lot. The source alignment snapping, that's for if you want sources that kind of snap together. It can be useful, but you can always disable this if you're trying to get a source in a specific spot. But for now, I'm going to keep this enabled. Whenever you make a change, also click the apply button. Otherwise, it's not going to save. Under stream setting connect your streaming service so if you're using twitch youtube facebook connect your account and then uh, add your stream key in here and you'll be able to stream we're gonna go to output mode and we're gonna change this from simple to advanced these settings that we're about to go through are pretty good for lower end pcs as well so just follow along and you can, you can troubleshoot some of the settings if it's not working out so for encoder we're gonna go from nvidia new this is the best encoder i've used the rescale output we are going to change this to 720 makes it a bit easier on the cpu we're going to keep it on cbr and we're going to put 5000 if you do have a higher end pc you can go up to 6000 or 5000 is too much you can always go down to 4500 or 4000 you'll be you'll still be good eframe interval we're going to do two that's uh, what most streaming services use quality is good but if you are having problems on quality performance works as well profile we do want to keep this at high and then the rest of the settings should look the same. So for recording, if you're trying to record videos, go ahead and select your path by using the browse feature. I have a uh, file already made for OBS recordings and I just made sure my path was that. Recording format, so when you uh, do the fresh install, it's gonna be on MKV initially. You wanna change this to MP4, more uh, of a diverse file range. So you can add this into DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro to easily edit. Under encoder, we're gonna change this to uh, the same NVIDIA new. And then rescale, we're not, we don't, no need to rescale for recordings. Uh, for the CBR, I'm gonna change this to 20,000. For me, this is a very crispy when I do my recordings and upload it onto YouTube. You can up it or down it depending on your PC, so just play around with it. And then the rest of the settings are good. But for audio, you don't need to change anything. Replay buffer is a great thing to add, so I always enable it. And I do 120 seconds. That's about two minutes of gameplay. The replay buffer allows you to set a hotkey to this, so whenever you're streaming or just recording, you can press a single button, and that last two minutes of gameplay gets saved into your folder. So of course, click apply again. And we're gonna go over to audio. So sample rate always keeps us on 48 just to get a uh, little higher quality. For here, you can enable some hotkeys for uh, your different elements. Over in the video tab, we're gonna be 1920 by 1080. And then on the bottom one, we're gonna make it match. So our base canvas is gonna be 1080, but if we go back to the output, we are rescaling it down to 720. So it's gonna be a little crispier resolution when we're actually streaming. Downscale, so I use the uh, 36 samples. If you are having trouble using that, you can always go back to the 16 samples. And then common FPS value, we're gonna go over to 60 FPS to get that smooth gameplay. Apply. Now hotkeys, you can add hotkeys as you may need. This allows you just to, uh, you set up scenes and sources and you can just press a single button to transition from scene to scene or uh, to like hide a source and stuff like that. Over in the advanced settings, we're gonna go process priority and we're gonna make sure we're on high. We wanna keep OBS as a uh, high priority for our PC. Boop, 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 boop. Color space, we're gonna keep it at 709 and then color range, we're gonna go to full. We wanna to get that full spectrum file formatting keep it as this because when you save files it won't overwrite so this is very important just keep it like this all right so you're optimized go ahead and start setting up our scenes and sources go ahead and click apply before exiting and then press ok awesome so we'll start off with a, uh, a scene over here i'm gonna go ahead and rename this by right clicking go over to rename this is going to be our, our webcam source you can name it whatever you want but this just makes it a little bit easier so now we have a webcam source scene we're gonna go over to sources right here and then click on this plus button here, we're gonna add a video capture device. I'm gonna name this uh, webcam. And this is the Logitech Brio. So we're gonna optimize our Logitech Brio. Right now, we're just using default settings. So under resolution, we're gonna go custom, and then we're gonna select 1920 by 1080. Under FPS, we're gonna go to the highest FPS video format. We're gonna leave that alone. Color space, 709, and then color range, we're gonna go to full. After that, we are good to go for the webcam. We're gonna add a another source right here, and I'm gonna name this desktop capture. So now we can switch between webcam source and desktop capture. Under desktop capture, we're gonna press the plus button. 
and we're gonna add display capture. You can name it whatever you want. And right here, currently capturing the OBS, but we don't want that. So I'm gonna click on the other monitor. So there's a drop down menu and you can choose which monitor you're looking at. Press okay. Now, as you can see, we have these stripes on the side. This means that our image is uh, bigger than our canvas. Easy fix, you can resize it if you want to manually like this. You can use fit the screen or stretch the screen. Sometimes fit the screen doesn't work. So if you do stretch the screen, it'll just fill in the scene. I use desktop capture capture because when I'm doing games, it will just capture the whole desktop. But if you're trying to bring like a uh, Google Chrome in here and go to YouTube and show people stuff, it's a great all inclusive. But if you didn't want to show your desktop, you can go back to the source buttons and you can go to game capture. You can name it whatever game you want. Press OK. And in the mode, you're going to pick capture specific window. And when you do this, it's going to give you a list of options for your window. So if you're playing Overwatch, it's going to show Overwatch window. And you're going to click that. And that's the only thing it's going to show. And you can disable your cursor if you want to. So game capture only limits you to that specific source that you're trying to use. I like using desktop capture so I don't have to switch between sources. All right, next thing, we're going to add another source. We're going to name this game scene. In this scene, we're basically going to combine both of the other scenes into this one. This is called scene nesting. So in the sources, we're going to press plus button go to scene and we're going to add our different sources so we got the desktop capture we're going to go ahead and click the plus button again add another scene and we're going to choose the webcam now so no wait now we got the webcam and desktop in the same scene now the webcam we're going to make it smaller so we can uh see our gameplay as you can see for this webcam we have a uh, a wide view i don't like that so i'm going to crop it in order to crop this all you have to do is hold the alt key and then you can drag you can drag each side to get your desired size. It looks a bit better. Now I can make it a little bit smaller and then you can place your webcam wherever you want to. I'm gonna keep it here for now. All right, we are looking good. So now we have a basic setup. We have our webcam and our gameplay, but we have no audio yet. I'm gonna show you how I set up my audio. I'm gonna go back over to file and settings. Now we're gonna click on the audio tab and then desktop audio. I keep this enabled. So desktop audio is gonna be uh, your overall PC audio. So if you're playing YouTube music in the background, this is gonna pick it up. This is gonna pick up uh, your gameplay as well. Anything your desktop is hearing is what the stream is gonna hear when you're using desktop audio. So you can pick your source. My source happens to be this. You also wanna select your mic. So select your source mic. Mine is the chat mic, and then you will be good to go. Click apply and then okay. Now we have desktop audio, we have a mic audio, and then a webcam. We're not going to use our webcam audio. I'm going to go ahead and mute this. Make sure it's muted. And then I'm going to click on this gear icon and I'm going to click hide. I don't want to see the webcam audio source. I just want to see what I need. Now we have our two sources. I'm going to go ahead and name these sources just so it's easier to manage. So in order to do that, click this gear icon again and then rename. I'm going to name this the Newman and then desktop audio. You can change this as well if you want. Now we're going to click this gear icon again and go to advanced audio properties. It's very important. Over here shows you all of your audio sources. So if you leave this as monitor off, you personally will not hear any of this, but your stream will. If you click on monitor only mute output, you will hear it, but your stream will not hear it because you're muting that output. If you do monitor and output, you can hear it and your stream can hear it. But for desktop audio, I choose monitor and output because I want to hear it. And then for your mic, same thing for same thing for your mic. I use monitor and output because I like to hear my voice to make sure I, that I'm actually close enough to the mic or to make sure I'm not peaking. If you didn't want to hear yourself, you can always just keep it as monitor off. Your stream will be able to hear you, but you won't hear yourself talk in your headphones. If you have it as monitor only and mute output, you're going to hear it, but your stream is not going to hear it. So do not select that for your mic. And the webcam, we're not going to even touch. Now these tracks are for uh, recording purposes. So if you wanted to split up your desktop, desktop audio from your mic audio, you can have these on different tracks. And when you drag and drop it into your editing software, it'll be two different audio tracks. So if you wanted to delete mic audio, you can just delete that and it'll just be left with your desktop audio. Now we have game capture, webcam, and our audio is set up. So we're gonna spice it up a little bit and we use this game scene to create another scene. If you go back to your scenes, right click game scene. We can duplicate. We're just gonna keep it game scene two. And on this one, we're just gonna move our webcam in another position. Let's move it on the other side of the screen right here. So in game scene two, we're gonna go over to webcam source, right click it. We're gonna go over to transform and then we're gonna flip horizontally. We're looking at the gameplay. Now when we switch between sources, 
the webcam is looking at the gameplay in each source a little variety so you can make more game scenes if you want maybe put it in each corner to add a little variety and you can all set these scenes to hotkeys if we go over to file settings hotkeys we'll just type in our, our scene so game scene you can find your scene and then select the hotkey i'm gonna help you build some scenes that typically you would see in a stream so our game scene one and we have our game scene two we're gonna add another scene we're gonna call this just chatting so in our just chatting scene we're just gonna bring over another scene or we're gonna bring our webcam scene over and this is basically this will basically just be you chatting to the stream now you can transition from game scene to just chatting in a smooth way i'm gonna add another scene of just chatting to add a source scene we're gonna do a webcam source and we're gonna add our gameplay our desktop capture now if we hold the shift key and then drag our source we can kind of squish it and then for the webcam i'm just going to drag over a little bit just like that so now it's kind of like half and half gameplay on this side with your webcam on the other side i'm just giving you different ideas you can play around with for your stream just to get the uh, the engines running we can also do we can also do the opposite of this game scene so if we right click this go ahead and duplicate this i'm just going to name this just chatting three i'm going to undo my crop if you just hold the alt key again then I'm going to right click my webcam source, go to transform and stretch the screen. So now I got that over here. And for my desktop capture, I'm going to click it and drag it above my webcam source. And on the desktop capture, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and position it in the corner. So maybe you're in a queue for your game. You can have your game capture just chilling so everybody can still see it. And then you can be talking to your stream right here. So now you have a little variety for your stream. You got two different gameplay scenes, which you can customize. You have a couple different just chatting scenes to keep it spicy for your stream. So that was the basics of setting up your stream. So we'll get the brain juices flowing so you can actually customize it for yourself. But this will get you up and running. Settings are optimized and now you have a few scenes to get started. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down and I'll get it answered. We're going to be doing more OBS tutorials, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.